Hello, welcome back to the third instalment of our rivers revision videos. So we've looked so far at the river profiles and how that changes from source to mouth. We've looked at the different processes that are going on with erosion, transportation and deposition. And so what we're going to do now is put into actual context why erosion, transportation and deposition is so important. So we're going to look at the different features that are in a river. So the first, first thing I'm going to look at is the upper course of the river. So right at the top in the mountains, in the hills, where it's really steep and you've got narrow valleys. Um, before we do that, though, it's really important to understand that there's two types of erosion going on. So there's lateral erosion, which is side to side erosion. So this is erosion that's basically eating into the sides of the river banks and making the river wider. But then you've got vertical erosion, which is, is the um, erosion where it's digging down into the land and making the, the river deeper um, and the valley deeper. And so these are two processes that I will mention as we go through the next few videos. So it's just important to understand the different types. Lateral erosion we won't get onto really until the lower course of the river, uh, but vertical erosion is going to be happening quite a lot in the next couple of, um, of videos that we look at, the downwards erosion. Basically a river wants to get back to sea level. Uh, that's the whole purpose of a river. Um, it's, it's eating its way down into the land to get back to sea level. And that's why vertical erosion is so important. So if we're looking at, um, at this, we are going to first of all start off by looking at, at waterfalls. So this is just a nice picture here of a waterfall. I think this is high force um, on the River Tees. And so you've got here, is it's obviously in real, real stormy conditions, quite a, a large amount of water, a large volume of water, cascading from an upper part down into a lower part. Now you've done waterfalls before um, in Key Stage 3, so this might just be a bit of a recap for some of you. Some of you might not remember it and it's a, it might be a whole new thing. But waterfalls are quite an easy thing to understand. Um, there are four main stages to a waterfall formation. So you will have seen this in lesson. Um, what we need to do in geography when you're asked about what's going on in terms of the processes of a formation of a waterfall or a gorge or something you need to explain it in stages it needs to be logical it needs to be sequenced because that's what's going to get you into level two or even level three if it's a level marked answer so if it's a four or a six mark answer so remember on this paper you won't get any questions that are nine markers you'll just get up to six markers and so you might get a series of diagrams like this in the exam or you might get a picture like the picture here and you might be asked to explain what's going on and so you need to use things like firstly secondly the next thing to happen is subsequently so it needs to be words that you'd use in english for a story for the progression of a story to progress how a waterfall forms so there's four main stages now in your exam you don't have to draw a diagram but you can um, we've not seen yet any examples where you've been told to draw a diagram specifically, but please be aware you can draw diagrams to support your answers. Uh, that's something really, really key that you can un can do if you want to. So there are four stages to a waterfall formation. The first stage here is where you've got two bands of rock. So you have to have two bands of rock for a waterfall. You've got the cap rock or the top bit of the rock, which is harder rock. The bottom bit, so in this case, the, the browny sandy colour is softer rock. And so you've got two bands. And so when a river starts to flow over the land, it will start to erode the softer rock first. And what will happen is it will form, as you can see here, a step in the landscape. So it just forms a little step. You might have seen these along the River Mersey where you get little rapids forming. And that's because you've got a band of hard rock on the top here and then a band of soft rock underneath. And so you get little rapids forming or a step. Stage two, the erosion continues of the softer rock. And so what happens is actually you start to get a little pool forming. And we call this a plunge pool. Now at the start, obviously, it's going to be quite small. Uh, but over time, it will develop into a much deeper pool, as we'll look at in a second. But you can notice here, not much has happened to this hard rock. It's staying firm. It's staying still. Um, not much is happening. But what is happening is underneath in this soft rock this is starting to grow this plunge pool it's getting deeper the reason it's getting deeper is because you've got the river flowing and then crashing down into the 
the bottom bit here, the plunge pool, and that creates hydraulic action. It also creates a bit of abrasion, and you also get rocks in there that are starting to, um, to break up as well because of attrition. And so over time, this plunge pool gets deeper. And we also get here, this bit here where it's cutting under the hard rock is called the undercut. So an undercut starts to form. Stage three, what happens is this undercut continues to get bigger. And because it's getting bigger, what happens is the hard rock above it is overhanging, or it forms an overhang. And as it forms the overhang, it becomes weakened by the pressure of the water above it. It also becomes weakened because gravity is pulling down on it. And eventually, the overhang will collapse into the plunge pool. And when it collapses into the plunge pool, that material that breaks down, into the plunge pool will be used as like missiles against the the soft rock to weaken the soft rock even further and so over time what will happen is this plunge pool will continue to get deeper and the undercut will continue to get deeper the overhang will form again and it'll collapse again into the plunge pool and that's kind of shown in stage four so you get continued process of the erosion of the soft rock and the retreat we call it of the hard rock as it retreats, it actually forms something called a gorge. So a gorge, if you think about the Grand Canyon, that is a big windy gorge. And so you've got really, really steep, almost vertical sides either side of the river, and then the river running down the middle. And so that gorge will form because of the retreat of the waterfall. And it's important to remember that, that waterfalls form gorges. So if you're asked the question about how a gorge forms, they, need, they are asking you, how does a waterfall form? And then you add on the end that as the waterfall retreats over time, it forms the gorge. Okay, so it's important to always put, think about these two features as actually the same feature, really, because one leads on to another. So that's one feature found in the upper course. What we also tend to get is this thing called potholing at the bottom of the waterfall in the plunge pool. And it looks like this. You only really see this during low flow. So summer um, or well, obviously when we've not had lots of rainfall. And you can see here these holes where basically you've had stones that have been swished around in there. And they've effectively drilled down into the, the bedrock, um, which has caused these what are called potholes because it looks like a pot could fit into there. Another thing we've got happening in the upper course are V-shaped valleys. So these are quite um, easy to understand. So as I said, a river is, is vertically eroding in the upper course. It's digging down. And as it digs downwards, you obviously start to get, as you see in the middle diagram here, really steep, sheer um, facing valleys. Okay, um, But what happens over time is because it's really, really steep, it leaves these sides quite vulnerable uh, to erosion and to weathering. And as it gets weathered away, it forms cracks. And eventually what will happen is that those sides will collapse into the river and it will form the V-shaped valley, as you can see here. Um, and so that's how V-shaped valleys form, is because the, the vertical erosion continues to happen and then the sides of the valley basically slip down into the river channel. And over time, what you get is these things called interlocking spurs. So you can see here, these are quite difficult to understand it from a diagram. Uh, but when we go out to the Peak District, you'll see it a lot clearer. Um, is you get kind of little hills, hummocky hills that are kind of interlocking into each other. And as the um, the river valley gets further and further into the, the landscape, it digs down and creates V-shaped valleys. These V-shaped valleys kind of interlock. The way to kind of imagine it is if you interlock your fingers on your hand and then kind of look up your fingers, you can see your fingers are interlocking. Well, that's kind of what's happening. Is you've got lots of valleys interlocking. That's what I would call them interlocking spurs. The um, some more to help explain that. So you get different valleys that connect together. Those are the the three main features that you find in the upper course. So waterfalls, which then lead onto gorges because they retreat. V-shaped valleys caused by the downwards or the vertical erosion of the uh, of the river into the landscape. And then interlocking spurs, which is where valleys are interlocking. So that's the, the next video. Um, what we're going to be looking at next is the middle course and the lower course of the river and the features there. All right, see you soon. Bye.